Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the symptoms of thyroiditis. And I'm being very specific about that term. I'm talking about thyroiditis in general. I'm not talking about Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So what you may not realize is that thyroiditis is a more general and broad term used to describe an inflammatory state in the thyroid gland. And this inflammatory state can cause an array of symptoms. In fact, it can cause your thyroid to fluctuate um, it can cause your thyroid function to fluctuate as well. And it can be kind of difficult to put your finger on and to diagnose the conditions that cause this. And we will be talking about Hashimoto's as a cause of thyroiditis, but, but thyroiditis is not the only cause of, um, of, Hashimoto's is not the only cause of thyroiditis and something that you should be aware of. So if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist and I specialize in treating patients with thyroid conditions, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. But today is about thyroiditis. And again, we're gonna talk about the symptoms. But first, let me just define it for you. So as I mentioned before, thyroiditis is really just a more broad and general term. Now, most people, they're aware of something called Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and they may, which is the most common form of thyroiditis, by the way, by far. Um, and so most people, if they do have thyroiditis, they'll have it because of Hashimoto's, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I want to tell you, and I want to explain to you that there are many different causes of thyroiditis, and each of these has a different set of symptoms and a different sort of um, uh, course that you could take if you do have that various type of thyroiditis. So I want you to be aware of that and we'll talk about these as we go. So what are the various types of thyroiditis? Well, the most common, as I mentioned, is Hashimoto's, okay? And that is an autoimmune disease. So we'll just put autoimmune up here. And this sort of thyroiditis, which again is referred to as just inflammation of the thyroid gland, that's what itis means. So if you have itis at the end of any sort of term in the body, you know that that refers to inflammation of that specific part. So thyroid, itis, so inflammation of the thyroid gland. Um, but you could have itis of anything, right? You could have gastritis, which means inflammation of the stomach, and that could be caused from a variety of different things, or inflammation of any other sort of body part. So just be aware of that. But Hashimoto's, the, the inflammation is caused because your own immune system is attacking your thyroid gland. So if your own immune system is damaging your thyroid gland, that's gonna cause inflammation in the gland and a certain set of symptoms and so on. But again, that's not the only one that can do that. Another one is called viral or subacute thyroiditis. And this is one that's going to play a big role in a lot of people's lives coming up here because of COVID. So that virus can cause inflammation in the thyroid gland as a post-infectious sort of problem. And it can cause some of the symptoms we're gonna be talking about in just a minute and it's related to the viral infection of the gland. So the, the virus can get inside the gland or at least stir up the immune system to attack or to at least cause problems with the, with the um, thyroid gland and that can result in a certain set of symptoms. Just like you can have a viral thyroiditis, you can also have a bacterial thyroiditis. You can actually get a bacterial infection um, inside of the thyroid gland and that's called an acute thyroiditis. That's pretty rare. In fact, I've never seen anybody have that disease. I've seen I've seen lots of uh, viral subacute thyroiditis, tons and tons and tons of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and I've never seen a bacterial thyroiditis that I can think of off the top of my head. Th these are people that are gonna be very, very, very sick. They will need, um, probably be in the hospital, they'll need medical attention very rapidly because that's a very serious condition. But you should be aware that it can cause it. The other one is radiation induced. So if you get radiation for things like um, head and neck cancers, that radiation can hit your thyroid gland and damage it and cause inflammation because it's irritated the, the area or irritated the gland. And then lastly, you can get what's called drug induced thyroiditis. And that's exactly what it sounds. You can actually have drugs that you take like prescription medications that damage your thyroid gland. Uh, one of those would be amiodarone. Another one would be lithium. In fact, I have an entire um, video that describes the various types of prescription medications which can damage your thyroid gland. So if you're taking any prescription medications, make sure you watch that video um, because then you'll know if your medications are actually causing thyroid problems, which is actually fairly common. So let's talk about the stages and the symptoms of thyroiditis more generally. So remember, as I said, each of these conditions, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, viral sub, uh, um, thyroiditis, radiation, bacterial, drug-induced, they all have a different course. And what I mean by course is the, the various phases that whoever has them will go through. Now, some of these, oh, you know what? I forgot to put up here, postpartum. You should also know that just having a baby can actually cause your thyroid gland to become inflamed and, and um, 
it can actually cause inflammation in that thyroid gland. And postpartum thyroiditis is actually very common. I've seen a lot of postpartum thyroiditis. And a lot of people believe that postpartum thyroiditis is really just an extension of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, the only difference is Hashimoto stays around, postpartum only stays around for the postpartum period and then goes away. But enough women who have postpartum turn into Hashimoto. So there's definitely some overlap in between here, but I, I should have mentioned that when I forgot. So postpartum part, uh, thyroiditis is another important cause. But what can happen is each of those conditions will cause a different course. So for instance, let's take Hashimoto's um, as an example. So you can have three different phases here. You can have a hyperthyroid phase, you can have a hypothyroid phase, and then you can have a normal phase, which is sometimes referred to as a euthyroid phase. In the case of Hashimoto's, it almost always starts out bouncing between these two. And it will, you know, maybe you'll have a hyperthyroid phase for a couple months. You know, you'll be hyperthyroid, so your thyroid will be high. Then it'll kind of come down to normal. So normal's like right here. Then you'll be low and you'll stay there. Then you might go up and down. And then eventually you will just stay low. So Hashimoto's thyroiditis almost always ends up in low thyroid function pretty much forever for most people, unless you can treat it early. And again, I have some videos on that. But that's not the same as viral or subacute thyroiditis. Viral subacute may go high and then low, but at the end, it will end up normal. So it will completely resolve. Almost every case will completely completely resolve and you'll end up in the normal phase for the rest of your life. So no long-term uh, consequences as, as a result of that thyroiditis, which should be differentiated from Hashimoto's, which will end up in a low thyroid for the rest of your life. Okay. So some of these things will go up and down and end up normal and other ones will go up and down and end up low forever. So you should be aware of that. Let's talk a little bit about these phases. So the hyperthyroid phase is exactly as it sounds. For a period of time, you're, you're, you will be experiencing symptoms of hyperthyroidism, meaning your thyroid hormone is too high. And what happens here is that if you have any sort of infection or damage or trauma, like take for instance, someone just punched you in the neck. If someone punched you in the neck where your thyroid is, your thyroid is going to release thyroid hormone because it was damaged, right? Somebody actually mechanically or physically punched you and it damaged the gland by pressing against it. And it's going to release thyroid hormone when it's touched like that. And that will cause a release of those thyroid hormones and you'll feel it. I mean, if you got hit hard enough, uh, you would feel hormones going through your body and you feel a little, you know, you'd experience these symptoms. You might experience a little bit of unexplained weight loss or fatigue or tremors or anxiety, or you feel your hands uh, sweaty. You'd, you'd have diarrhea or heat intolerance. These are all symptoms that you have too much thyroid hormone in the body. Now think of it in the case of autoimmune thyroiditis. Imagine if your immune system is just attacking your thyroid gland constantly. If it attacks it, you know, in the short term, it can cause the release of those thyroid hormones and you'll experience these hyperthyroid symptoms. Um, it doesn't last forever though, because imagine you can't just press on the gas all day long, eventually you run out of gas. And that happens in Hashimoto's, which causes you to go down to the next phase, which we'll talk about in just a sec. Um, and imagine if you had your immune system revved up because you had a viral infection, or at least there's an infection in your gland, that's going to cause the release of uh, too much thyroid hormone for a short period of time. And that will cause these hyperthyroid symptoms. The next phase that you can go through is a hypothyroid phase. Almost every single one of these will have a hypothyroid phase. And that is a phase in which the body, the thyroid gland can no longer produce enough thyroid hormone. So in the case of Hashimoto's, remember you're getting attacked temporarily, which is causing you know, damage to the gland, which is causing it to release more thyroid hormone, but it can't do that forever. So you know, think of the, the car and the, gas, um, and the gas pedal analogy I mentioned earlier. Eventually the car will run out of gas and no matter how hard you press your foot on the gas pedal, nothing's going to come out. And so that means the thyroid hormone in this analogy will not be, it won't be produced in sufficient quantities, which means your thyroid function will be low. So hypothyroid symptoms are the exact opposite of these hyperthyroid symptoms. So instead of weight loss, you have weight gain, you, but you still have fatigue. They're, they're actually a shared between the both of those, but instead of heat intolerance, you'll have cold intolerance. Instead of anxiety, you'll have depression. Instead of diarrhea, you'll have constipation. And then you also have dry skin. So all the symptoms are pretty much the complete opposite as those in the hyperthyroid phase. And then lastly, a lot of these, like I mentioned before, and even in Hashimoto's for a short period of time, you can actually have normal thyroid function. So it's not uncommon for you to have a period of normal thyroid function, even as you go between high to low, high to low, or, and in some of these, you may end in the normal area and that will just be it. And you'll never experience any symptoms for the rest of your life again. Um, and that can happen by the way, in, in some, some cases of Hashimoto's, but it's, it's less common. So there are really three phases. Most people flip and flop between the two, but you should be aware of these if you have any sort of cause of, Hashim, of, of thyroiditis. But really what I wanna get across here is that there are many types of thyroiditis. Not every type will end up or have the same course, the disease course over time. And certain ones are more long lasting than other ones, so like Hashimoto's potentially will be around forever, whereas viral subacute thyroiditis will not. 
and so on. So you should be aware of which thyroiditis you have, what caused it, and what treatments are available to you because of the thyroiditis that you have. So I know that can be a little bit confusing, but if you have any questions regarding this, please leave your comments below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you haven't already, make sure you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information all about the thyroid. My goal is to help thyroid patients to help you know, demystify this information so that you, know, you can get the help that you need and actually feel better. So that's really all that this information is designed to do is to help you. Um, so if you found it helpful, let me know. And otherwise I will see you guys in the next one.